Welcome back to the Real News Network. We're talking about Sri Lanka and its war with the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam. I'm joined by Dr. R. Charan, who is an assistant professor at the University of Windsor in the Department of Sociology and Anthropology. Charan is the former deputy editor of the Saturday Review, which used to come out of Jaffna in the 1980s, and he's also a founding member of the free media movement in Sri Lanka. Thank you for joining us. Thank you again. Charan, uh, in the last segment, uh, we were talking about the international community's lack of understanding of this conflict. And as a result, what it is proposing in terms of a, a resolution, a solution, uh, a peace proposal, is all unrealistic and cannot be achieved. So let's get a better understanding of what this conflict is uh, all about and what the international community can actually uh, do in order to bring about a peaceful solution to the conflict. And in order to do that, we really have to understand uh, what, what the uh, two sides want and what is possible. The international community had uh, two uh, important uh, uh, opportunities to to deal with the with the conflict, the first opportunity was the the agreement, uh, the ceasefire agreement uh, between the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Nadu and uh, and the government of Sri Lanka. You know, it was uh, it was uh, it was uh, it was an agreement for permanent ceasefire uh, with an elaborate agreement uh, supported by the international community. Tell us what the international community is for those who so, might um, not be following this issue. It was mediated by the government uh, government of uh, Norway and supported by the um, U.S., um, India, and then what they call uh, Japan and all the other countries that were interested in uh, seeing the conflict to an end. And this body was appointed by the United Nations? No, the United Nations never had any kind of direct intervention in the, in, in the Sri Lankan conflict. It was actually mediated by, uh, by, uh, by Norway, but UN endorsed it. And, um, and most, of the, most, of the, uh, most of the powerful uh, um, countries in the world, they endorsed it. So the agreement provide, uh, agreement treated both parties of the conflict as equals. There was parity. And the, the territory was demarcated as the territory controlled by the LTT and the territory controlled by the government. Both parties uh, kept on violating uh, the ceasefire agreement. So that, 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 that was one of the problems. But the other issue is that the, <coughs> uh, the, the agreement uh, provided uh, lots of space to constructively engage with the liberation tigers of Tamil Nadu. So uh, Norway and all the other countries, there, they, uh, they went to their territory and they met with the leaders and there was some kind of reciprocal arrangement. And for, uh, for several years, the, the, the process uh, gave way to some kind of an opening up of a very close totalitarian structure of the LTT. And then, you know, uh, international community had a wonderful opportunity to use the, uh, use the chance to, to uh, partly, um, you know, educate the LTT and also partly get themselves educated on the nuances of the Sri Lankan conflict. So uh, that kind of constructive engagement did not continue, mainly because at some point the United States decided to host a, a donor conference in the U.S., but it failed to invite the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Nadu. That was part of the conflict. So, uh, and you know, that was followed by the subsequent banning of the LTT as a terrorist organization by the European Union and then, you know, and As and well Canada. as the CIA. As well, yes. So what happened was, while there was a ceasefire agreement in place, and while there was negotiations were going on, and the, 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 the so-called international community turns around and banned one part, of the, one part of the conflict as illegitimate. So that simply closed the avenues for a constructive engagement with an organization like LTT. I mean, we also need to understand the nature of the LTT. It, it was, and it's still, a very militant organization. Their main uh, focus is, uh, is military tactics and, and attacks. So politics, perhaps, is not clearly an important option for them. You know, politics may play a second fiddle to the larger ob objective of, uh, of military aims. So in order to bring them back to the so-called uh, uh, the process of political discourse, this kind of constructive engagement is necessary. The international community, during that period, they could have done, achieved a lot more. And also, um, when, when, the, when the LTT was, was demanded that, okay, separate state is impossible, so we, don't, we, that is, we cannot simply 
are um, negotiated on that one, come up with an alternative solution. So then LTD came up with a solution called internal self-governing authority. That, you know, instead of, uh, they used the notion of self-determination in a very creative way of saying, let's demand internal autonomy, internal self-determination for the Tamil people in the Northern East, as opposed to separation. And that would be somewhat like the Aboriginal people yes, in Canada. In Canada, yeah, perhaps that is, that, is, that, is the best, uh, that is the best comparison. And that was also drafted uh, by an international uh, group of uh, constitutional experts, you know, uh, mostly from diaspora and also from others. Um, and they they put forward that the, that inter the what they call ISDA, and the Sri Lankan government flatly rejected it, saying that is very maximalist. And secondly, you know, after the tsunami, there was a huge opportunity for both parties to work together at a time of great catastrophe. And then there was this um, what they call PTOM, the post tsunami operational mechanism that was mooted, supported by the international community, where the government of Sri Lanka and the Tigers would uh, take part in the reconstruction on an equal basis. And the government of Sri Lanka did not want to implement that one, partly because the, the right-wing uh, single extremist organization like JVP went to the courts, and there was tremendous opposition from the, from the Sri Lankan government side to enter into any kind of deal. So that fell apart. So that uh, evokes a question. Is there a role for the international community uh, in this conflict? Can they actually put some teeth into some sort of a peace agreement, um, and even if they did, would that work? I think there were there are, there are a couple of options. Uh, um, you know, uh, they might want to consider a the um, they should first uh, uh, come out of this myopic uh, way of looking at things like LTT is the issue. So the Tamil issue is a larger issue. It's a larger than issue. LTT is only one tiny aspect of it. B. Um, it should, uh, they should simply demand an immediate ceasefire um, and then uh, and, and expect uh, both parties to, to come, for, come for a talks. And C, they can facilitate the talks by, by saying, arguing, okay, so this is not going to go ahead, but um, we do not have to talk about the separate state of Tamils, but we would rather talk about what are the, what, what are the reasonable ways of addressing the issue. And, and four, I mean, uh, this, is, this is a kind of a very realistic and, uh, you know, kind of, uh, it needs to be worked out that UN, uh, they could invite UN to, to have a referendum in the, in, in the Northern East to, to, to ask the Tamil people what sort of, uh, whether they would like to succeed or whether they are willing to accept any other form of, uh, uh, any other form of self-determination. So that is, that is a simple way of uh, knowing what exactly the Tamil people there it want. So it, it, it won't be easy, but that is the only way that you know, international com uh, community can somehow uh, insert themselves constructively um, in, a, in, a, in, in this scenario. Is there any other body besides the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam uh, who can be a part of these negotiations representing the Tamil people? Well, that, that, that is a very interesting question. So there is a, there is a parliamentary group, a Tamil parliamentary group called the Tamil National Alliance. Um, they are sort of uh, 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 pro-LTT, even though there are a couple of members, they have their own independent views. But the, the, the Tamil nationalism, are, you know, um, uh, that has been articulated by, by the LTT is so powerful and so articulate. So they have been success, uh, very successful in eliminating the other, other kinds of opposition in the past. So right now, uh, LTT is the, is the dominant force. And there are a couple of other, other, um, other Tamil groups and organizations that are working with the government. So, but most importantly, the, in any kind of negotiations, the, the, the Muslims of Sri Lanka need to be represented. Otherwise, this, this conflict cannot be uh, addressed um, in a very holistic manner. So, uh, realistically speaking, um, it is the LTT that has been fighting, consistently fighting for, for the separate state. So, it, it needs to be, you need to, you need to talk to your enemy, right? So, you don't, you don't have to talk, talk to your friends because your friends are going to be part of it, right? So, in realistically speaking, so any, any, any negotiations have to be had uh, with the LTT. So, Charan, in this segment we talked about what the role of the international community could be, uh, what are the elements that need to be taken into consideration in facilitating a, another peace agreement in Sri Lanka. Um, 
In the next segment, uh, let's talk about what you have introduced here. Please join us again for the fourth part of our interview with Dr. R. Charon.